all should be in the water cooking by now. You should be finishing off your sauce and getting ready to plate. If they overcook the noodle, that means the egg inside will be solid. And that defeats the entire purpose of this dish, because the wow factor lies in that egg being very liquidy. Oh, my god. I wonder how many have actually made a crispy fried sage leaf. Ten, nine, wipe the eight, plate. seven, wipe six, the plate. five, come on, four, three, two, one. Heads up! up. Heads up! I am crossing my fingers, crossing my toes, crossing my little nose hairs, I'm crossing everything, that my egg is perfectly cooked and it's running in the middle. You've just completed your very first pressure test. We will taste all five ravioli. Kayla, bring your raviolo al uovo up to the front, please. Overall, I'm pretty confident about the pressure test because Kayla's in there. I honestly believe that she'll be the worst. Kayla? Hello, Chef. Nice presentation, and I see you have some shaved parmigiano on top. Yes, Chef. Well done. How did the crispy sage turn out for you? I get a little crunch. Well done. Let's try the big test. Does that make you happy? That makes me really happy. <laughs> The egg was very nice. So was the pasta. But not bad for a first time out. These people who say you cannot cook, these guys up there, you're wrong. You can cook. Thank you, Chuck. Watch out. I can cook, and I'm going to kick all your butts. Kayla. Can you tell me what kind of burger you plan to make? Duck and pork burger, crispy fried onion rings, warm mushroom salad, and a homemade roasted garlic aioli. Any concerns? I want to make sure that I have enough flavors. It's not too simple of a burger, as long as I get it done in time. <laughs> Hi, chefs. Tell me about the burger meat. A whole duck breast, pork shoulder, crispy fried onion, melted aged cheddar, and a warm mushroom salad. Perfect, the way the fat came through here. Oh, good. So tell me about the inspiration for this beautiful burger creation. My boyfriend's obsessed with burgers, so I really channeled my burger instincts today. <laughs> that makes me weak in the knees. Thank you. Kayla, you're up here again. I am. There's a lot of meat. How many boyfriends do you have? <laughs> Just one, <laughs> I promise. It's quite a mofo. But it's a great mouthful. Thank you, Chef. I am on cloud nine right now. All four burgers were fantastic. There was one, however, that stood out from the herd, and that burger belonged to... Kayla. Thank you. Good for her for winning the challenge, but I'm not worried about Kayla. Thank I you. I definitely don't think she's gonna be coming after me or anything, so... For winning today's mystery box challenge, you get to join us in the Master Chef Pantry. Follow us. A lot of people underestimated me when I came into this. I think I'm really showing the other home cooks I have what it takes, and I'm here to win it. Eric, welcome back. As you can see, Kayla won the last Mystery Box Challenge. Did everyone else cut themselves? <laughs> hmm, I wasn't expecting that. I'm not, I'm not too concerned because I'm up here and he's down there. <laughs> And Kayla has one final advantage that we have yet to reveal to her. You get to choose two home cooks who must use these apples and the Cascade Hop Ale to make us a delicious dessert. I can't bake, so I'm trying to smile at Kayla really pleasantly so she doesn't pick me to bake. When it comes to desserts and baking, on a scale of one to 10, I'm probably around a six. Who is your first choice? My first choice is Josh. Bring it on. I don't really want to bake today, but she wants to drop the bomb on someone she sees as competition, so hey, I'll take that. Kayla, you can choose one more home cook who must make a dessert. I think this person just shot themselves in the foot with their comments, so I'm picking Eric. 
because he overthinks things, is very scattered in the kitchen, and may not be able to get a dessert done in the allotted time. Eric gets under my skin a little bit. He knocked at a good tart once. That was a total fluke. I don't think he can do it twice. Eric, how do you feel about that? I am not a baker. <laughs> I'm not too big on desserts. I haven't made many desserts. I absolutely feel powerless. Kayla, Julie, how do you feel about being the last two to be picked? I haven't got the best reviews in the kitchen. I'll change everyone's mind today. Kayla, how about you? You've had great reviews. I'm a little bit surprised, but I think I'm going to blow this one out of the water. I haven't really got to know Danielle, but I haven't really gotten along with her thus far, and I don't feel like she's going to give us a chance to shine. So I'm really hoping that I'm on Dora's team. Dora, you have the final pick. All right, well, I know who I'm going for. You can't have two Italians in one kitchen. Too much stuff gets done. Julie, you're my girl. Thank you. I'm always last pick. I'm actually very happy to have Kayla on my team. I do know that Kayla was a server for several years, and she has proved herself in the kitchen. So welcome aboard. Thank you. I'm very excited to be on your team. Thank you. Maybe people still underestimate me, which really plays into my strategy anyways, because the more people underestimate me, the more I can kick their butt. Our intentions were to have a nice, crisp little cup. Well, I see Pino putting the prosciutto in a little muffin mold, and they're going to bake that off, I guess, to get it crispy. I wouldn't advise that. Maybe at a tailgate, but not in a gallery. And the failing point could be that they are very salty. And bitter. Pino, aren't you concerned that prosciutto, when you cook it, becomes a little salty? We want a little bit of a crunch. Greasy fingers, maybe for the guests afterwards. This is a bit of a problem here, guys. Danielle? Sorry? This is leathery, and it is salty. It could be the biggest yeah. problem. So what can we do that could go well with a sea scallop? These prosciutto cups are bad. Um, Food and art lovers aren't going to appreciate this. I don't think anyone's going to appreciate this. It's just not edible. Let me think uh, about it. Let me think about it right now. What about a potato chip? Like a thin potato chip. Kayla steps up to the plate. She grabs the purple new potatoes, and we have a plate on fish and chips. We're going to be serving a bay scallop on a beautiful purple potato chip. Chips are so much better. They're delicious. Awesome. All of a sudden, one of our worst ideas turns into one of our best. Chef, so you're making potato chips. I am making purple potato chips. Originally, our plan was to make uh, prosciutto crisps. But I hear Josh in the background. I thought this was a great backup. I am really happy with it. I like it. See, fish and chips. Exactly. Good idea. You can name it fish and chips now. Thank you, Chef. You, my friend, need to come up with your own ideas, but thank you for loving my idea so much that you wanted to take it. I really appreciate it. I hope you're going to enjoy it. I hope I do. <laughs> a rich, creamy filling, a crisp, sweet crust. Perfect balance of texture and flavor. One ingredient overused, and the beautiful balance will be destroyed. I'm not a baker. I've made it once before, once, and it didn't really turn out. So I'm freaking out. Five minutes before you should have the cheesecakes in the oven baking. Oh, oh. Holy shit. right, guys. Kayla has just pulled out some chocolate. So my concern would be it's starting to get a little too sweet, yeah. too heavy. Everyone else is just going to do their standard cheesecake. And I really think that taking this risk is either going to make me or break me. It's good. Oh, Lordy. I'm super stressed out because it doesn't look as pretty as I thought it did. And something as small as that could literally send me home. Wow. Wow. You did a nice marbling effect. You missed a little bit of crust, though. Yes, yeah, Chef. But I give you marks for definitely standing out from everyone else. The only thing I'm concerned about here is that you didn't really honor the main ingredient, which is cheese. I just wanted to do something a little bit different. Well, if different was your goal, you achieve that. In a bad way? In a good way. Thank you, Chef. I got a brain. I want to see Kayla cook brains. I want to see if she has what it takes. I make him cook dessert. He gives me brains. We're not even at all. You know, the, the biggest thing about brains, I think, is probably cleaning them well. So I've cleaned them, and now I'm soaking them in some buttermilk. Eric assigns me the brain. It just fuels me to get through this challenge. Whenever you underestimate Kayla and you give her something difficult, 
She really steps up to the bar and really proves herself. I'm gonna kill it today, and then I'm going after him. So he better watch out. Looks like a little brain surgery going on I've here. I've never cooked it before. Um, I've never eaten it before. Tell me how you're preparing it, what the plan is. So what I did is I soaked it in buttermilk for about 20 minutes, then I'm gonna deep fry it and dust it with a bit of salt. Buttermilk will help draw out that blood. Yes. It also helps keep it nice and white. So you're gonna to toss them in what before you fry them? Some flour that has a little bit of cayenne, a mustard powder, garlic powder, salt, pepper. It sounds like you know what you're doing. <laughs> well, let's hope. Maybe you're gonna to have to thank Eric. Yeah, no kidding, Eric. your brain. <laughs> brain nugget. Mmm. I am feeling really good. Everything on the dish is looking pretty damn good. Kayla, can you tell me all that's in your dish, please? Crispy fried cow's brains with grilled polenta, uh, sauteed mushrooms, and then a little bit of arugula. Sounds good. <sighs> so nervous. Personally, I think you had the toughest ingredient to work with. This is not a perfect dish. The polenta is under seasoned. The brains, though, are cooked to a tea. Thank you, chef. You continue to raise the bar. <sighs> so what I am expecting is crispy calf brain with velvety, smooth center. Do you know? That's what I get. Eric chose the brain especially for you because I think he thinks you lack some. You can tell him from me, you're wrong. You're wrong. So there. <laughs> <laughs> no, she's not gonna be in the bottom, which is unfortunate. I am absolutely the cook to be because I can make brains perfectly. I probably have a target on my back because I'm honest. Because I'm honest. Yeah, big time. But that's okay, I'm not too concerned about it because I'm just gonna cook my food and do my very best, and that makes me go home, then I go home. After losing 10 minutes to have her cut tended to. Danielle's been gone a long time. She's screwed. Danielle returns to the challenge. I think Kayla's gonna struggle. I think she's really puzzled. I would disagree. I think she's the one to watch. She's very confident. She deals well when she works on her own. Not a great team leader, but when she's in a solo situation, she performs very, very well. Kayla, how are you? Well, I'm not great. I'm in a pressure no? test, so. And what do you have on your fish here? Uh, some sumac, some white pepper, salt. It's very strong, though, sumac. Part of the classic preparation for this? No, it is not. Why would you add that, then? Because I like the flavor of it. I think that's yeah. a wise decision. You have 15 minutes left. All your salmon better be in the oven. Oh, my God, Kayla. Stop rubbing your hot hands on it. 15 minutes, I'm still busting with my puff pastry, and I'm freaking out right now. I'm freaking out. Dale and Kayla is still messing around, wrapping their fish. There's only 15 minutes left. What am I doing? Confidence. Yep. It's going in the oven now. It just looks awkward. Keep an eye on your salmon that's in the oven. The single most difficult challenge is the cooking of that fish. Because you can't see it, you can't touch it. It's encased in pastry. Is it browning? Very little. Danielle Salmon Wellington is beautiful. You have two minutes left. Final two minutes. Yeah, I'll just leave it to the last 10 seconds. It's not enough time. How much time do we have? One minute. One minute. Come on, Julie. It's going to be hot, so be careful. Oh, baby, I'll burn my hands. Don't you worry. 30 seconds. Fifteen seconds. Dale, what are you thinking? A puff pastry is not even cooked, and you're setting it on top of wet sauce? Ten, nine, eight, seven. Last five seconds, I go to squirt the sauce on top of the Wellington. Three, two, one, heads up! Good job. The dish I'm making is a stuffed squab with a uh, roast of cipollini onions. I'm totally gonna butcher him and he's gonna be looking pretty in about two minutes. 
I'm thinking about stuffing and roasting it. I'm not going to be able to do that in an hour. Kayla, a whole pigeon? That is ballsy. Kayla looks worried, very worried. So why would she do that? One minute, final minute. Come on. Kayla looks worried, very worried. So why would she do that? They cut it open and it's bloody and it's still squawking. I will definitely not make a good impression. I want to see the finishing touches going on those plates. You need to be finishing them up. 30 seconds. Time to panic. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Heads up. Woo! Today, because the dishes were so good, we've decided to try four. I'm thinking, that's me. That's me for sure. I hope they're gonna call my name. The cook who made the fourth and final dish took a calculated risk, but it's gonna take a closer look to see if it paid off. Please step forward. Kayla. So I did a whole roasted squab, and then I made a jus with the pan drippings from the squab. What I'm most interested in is if the pigeon is cooked medium to medium rare. Well, let's see. Oh. It looks good. It looks nicely cooked. I'm salivating already. And surprisingly tender. The pigeon is outstanding. I think it's safe to say that this is probably the riskiest thing anyone's done so far. To roast an entire squab on the bone in one hour and serve it perfectly cooked. Overall, very good job. First person I'm gonna pick is really a no-brainer. He's a wizard when it comes to Italian food. My first pick is Pino. Pino is gonna be the key to winning this challenge. I pick Mike. I hate team challenges, because I'm always in the bottom. Yeah. I choose Danielle. I don't want to be picked last again. I'm always picked last. So tomorrow, who's going to complete your team? So this is strategic. Eric and Kayla don't get along. So I definitely pick Julie. So Eric, how do you feel now that you have Kayla on your team? I feel perfectly great having Kayla on my team. I'm absolutely nervous having Kayla on my team, but I'll try to make it work. <laughs> this is mobile food. It can't be fussy food. It has to be food that's not going to get all over you. The ideal is a handheld snack. So a nice meatball sandwich, a taco, would be something that I would do. My role is to do the grilled polenta. Julie's doing the sauce. Eric is helping with the meatballs. And Danielle is a swing. I'm really excited about our menu. But oh my god, Eric is all over the freaking place, jumping into the truck, jumping out of the truck. This is me as Eric. Ah! I need garlic in here, puree, because we're braising anyways. Do you know how long it's going to take me to get all that garlic? Did Julie caramelize the onions first? Yes, she is. As a team captain, Eric is afraid to delegate. I think this is a real problem. Guys, where's Eric? Eric! Huh? Michael's calling you. What you making, guys? Uh, so we are doing uh, stuffed meatballs with crispy fried polenta yes, chef. and marinara sauce. Stuffed meatballs? Yes, chef. Polenta? Polenta. To me, that sounds like it's getting a little bit complicated. You've got to get as many of these out as possible. I would get rid of the polenta. It's just one other thing you got to worry about. Yeah, OK. I'm not very gung-ho about the idea because I love grilled polenta, but we have to listen to the chefs. When they give us advice, we listen. Come on, guys. Let's do this. Morel in the red truck is really high. We're ready to get this going. Four, okay, four. Cheese, cheese and basil, garnish. There you go. I'm shocked right now how well everyone's working together. Eric has actually started to calm down. He's doing a really good job. Keep the speed up, Eric. You're doing awesome. Extra, extra. Kayla and Eric working side by side, not fighting. Keep it going. Five dollars can make the difference. I'm proud of Kayla because she put her differences aside. We worked great together, but like, honestly, I don't see us ever being best friends. Just loaded. It's officially yeah. a craft meatball. Awesome. There you go. Every single $5 counts today. We need some more people. We have the idea to try and poach a couple of their customers. Hey, guys, I see you've been waiting a little while. You want to come over to our line? We're going quick. 
We first sent out Kayla, and she recruited quite a few customers. Good. Can we direct you over to this line? She got people from the crowd, got people from the blue team's line. Some mini meatballs, some beautiful fresh mozzarella, fresh basil, dig right in there. People are walking over from the blue line to our truck. Food is looking awesome. People are loving our subs. Like, we are winning this today, I guarantee you. I'm most worried about ice cream. I've never made ice cream. I sure as hell have never baked ice cream. So, worried? Yeah, I'm pants. Kayla? Hi. So I see you preparing some strawberries, so you're not sticking with a classic. Uh, no, I'm actually gonna do a riff on a Neapolitan ice cream. So I've done a chocolate sponge cake, a vanilla ice cream, and I'm gonna do a strawberry sauce. Well, I've never seen your hand tremble quite so much as it is today, so I'm gonna leave you with that and make sure that you uh, watch the time. They all look really scared, not only that they have to make this hard dessert, but someone's gonna be going home. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I'm okay. I see Kayla go up and then go down. Okay, I'm okay. You're safe. <laughs> oh my God, that girl will cook even if she has a broken arm. I start to mold my sponge cake and it's mushy. It is brown globs of goo. Trying to salvage it and put it in a ring mold and cross my fingers. Five minutes, start picking your Alaska. When I put it in the oven, I'm actually a little bit proud that I've actually pulled this off. My ice cream is solid and my meringue is perfect. I put my baked Alaska in the oven. I feel like I have a little bit of help. Everyone's doing awesome, but Kayla is behind everybody. A little bit worried about Kayla right now. She's got to get her baked Alaska in the oven. Two minutes. Two minutes left. Kayla's got the torch going. That's probably a smart idea. Mm -hmm. If you don't have enough time, just fucking sear it. That's what I would do. Yeah, so my meringue isn't crisping up as much as I would like it to, so I'm just going to blow towards the top of it really quickly. Don't know what it will do to the meringue, but it looks pretty. Nice. Very smart, Kayla. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Heads up! Great job. I know inside this meringue, my ice cream is soft. Right now, I'm not hoping to be the best. I'm hoping somebody screwed up more than I did. Now, there's just one more tasting to go before the judges decide who keeps their aprons and who goes home for good. Nice three layers. Thank you. What's the flavor of the sponge on the bottom? Uh, the flavor of the sponge is chocolate. Were you happy with the way the sponge turned out? Uh, it was a little bit fudgy, or more than spongy, but the flavor's really good. You're right. It's, it's fudgy. Yes, Chef. Almost like a brownie, if you wish. Thank you. I saw you using a bow torch. Where did you learn that trick from? I just wanted to get a little bit darker. I thought it would be a good idea. Well, it was a good idea. It definitely got it darker. It's different. Where is the sponge cake? Isn't that brown thing? Mm -hmm. Look at that. It doesn't look very peeling, does it? No, Chef. Flavor's nice. Took some risks here. And unfortunately, some of them don't pay off too well. Yes, Chef. The water's boiling for the bamboo shoots. Kayla, why are you making so much? It seems that you're, you're making enough to do 30 dim sum. Um, check your shrimp, Eric. I don't want it to be broken down mush. No, we have no shrimp. Rinse the shrimp. OK, these are things. There's nothing been in that sink. We need more shrimp. Don't let the pressure get to you. You've got this. Full of water. I'd get a colander. Get a colander. Get a colander. Fine. Chef just said. I have made him some. A little bit of water is fine. sakes, get the colander. Not to take pleasure in anyone's misery, but. If there's a little bit of water, it's fine. I've done this no, before. No, it's not OK. That will send us home. It looks like they're done for. What will a little water do when you're steaming a dumpling? The Please explain to me. The chef will call us out on it, I swear to God. There we go. Chin up and we're going to win this, OK? So which one is the toughest to shape? 
Hakao, definitely. How are you at the, the Hakao? Which one's that one? I Shrimp with the rice wrapper. I can fold it. Those are my toughest. I can do everything else. OK, then I'll do those. No, I'm doing the Hakao right now. OK. What's the skill needed? Well, I think to get the nice thin skin to form that nice shell-like dumpling. Just try and make them very pretty. Nobody wants an ugly dumpling. Eric has just gotten the shumai in the steamer, and now he's moving on to spring rolls. Great freaking job. You know how to do spring rolls. I don't know how to fold them perfectly. I can walk you through it. Yeah, I'll roll it. No problem. How many you got so far? I got three done. Nice. See if you can make those up before we switch. Pump it out, darling. Pump it out. Now, if I get switched in, you there just... There won't be a switch. There can't be a switch. Yeah, there will be. You just tell me what to do. OK. Switch! Are you... OK. You just tell me what to do. Do not forget about the spring rolls that no, are here. No, I'm not going to, trust me. I cannot make another spring roll. Eric and Kayla, they're like two separate teams completely. They want it so much, the emotion is getting the better of them. They're perfect. Okay, okay, okay. multitask. When the oil's hot, you need to put the pot stickers in. I think this is working perfectly for Mike. He made the right decision. <laughs> Very strategic. Spring rolls are coming out right now. Good? Yes. Tamara, just put everything on this plate. You got this, Marita. Good job. I need the sumac here. I can't do anything. Don't forget to put the caviar on top, remember? A little bit of tobacco on top. For your grandfather! One minute, pass me on the platter! This is all you, girl! Good job, Rita, you got this. 30 seconds! Ah! Yes, Tamara! I want beautiful presentation! I can't watch this. 10, 9, 8, Whoa! 7, 6, 5, 4, oh my God. 3, we never got those 2, things. 1, stop! I must say, that actually looks very professional. But then, your grandfather had a dim sum restaurant, right? Looks like he passed a lot of that to you. Well, Mike, definitely you put two cats in the cage. And they <laughs> definitely came out fighting. But I don't think you got the result you wanted. No, but at one point, though, Eric did get a bit frazzled. You bloody lost it. You lost it completely. Yes, sure. And you want to know? She got you back. She calmed you down. Thank you, Kayla. We both did great. Who's responsible for the spring roll? That was both of us, but he gave great leadership on what to do. Do you agree that it was a collaboration, the spring roll? Absolutely, Chef. Uh, she did the mise en place, and then I finished wrapping it. That's perfect. Great flavor, great texture, exactly what I expect from a spring roll. Thank you, Chef. Very nice. And Kayla, your mother and father are here all the way from BC. I want to win this today for my parents. They've given me so much drive, and they've made so many sacrifices for me. I miss you, Daddy. I want to win this so bad for them. This is for them today. How many onions, Kayla? Six. Team consensus, we? Yeah. Yeah, that's perfect. A lot of teamwork in the blue team, especially, very surprisingly, between Kayla and Eric. I need more carrots and garlic. Eric and I sometimes don't work fantastic together, but I just got to get my game face on. I'm not worried about Kayla, because her family's here. She's super pumped and super driven. These are gorgeous, you guys. You got the onions? Yeah. I'm getting the carrots ready. We're working fast, efficient, and making sure the flavors are fantastic. Kayla right now is getting the short ribs browned. We just got to make sure we get all that veg ready for it, because it's got to cook in the beef fat. There's one bowl. You almost ready to start braising those? Yeah. OK. I'm making braised short ribs because it's an ode to my parents. My dad loves meat and potatoes. Some of them, you can get a bit more caramelization on one side, but the main part is getting them in there. You don't have time to caramelize more. You got to get that thing braising, or it's going to be tough as nails. That amount of wine will take 20 minutes to cook down. Well, I hope she cooks it down before she put the lid on. Just get them boiling. Just get them boiling. I think she's got to get that lid on that pressure cooker. I mean, she's going to run out of time. We got to close them up. Oh, they're yeah, going to be closed up in five. There. Well, just put a lid on it. Just get them boiling. It looks like Kayla's having a hard time getting the uh, pressure cooker sealed up. That one's on. That one's not. The back two aren't. Swap, swap. No, get swap, them swap, swap. Get them swap, swap, swap. I got it. You got it? They're good. Kayla, you're yeah. working on the braised beef short rib? Yes, Chef. Terrific. And this is a home favorite, obviously. It absolutely is. I'm going to try and elevate it. What's in the pot right now? We have red wine, beef stock, thyme, garlic, rosemary, onion, carrot, fennel. Sounds delicious. Do you want to get that flavor of that wine into that beef? Absolutely. So you have to cook off that alcohol. I hope you've done that sufficiently. It's going to be reduced enough. 
Time is ticking. Thank you, Chef. Kayla, which component are you most worried about right now? The frites. Mm, why is that? Because I've never made frites before. They're blanched and they're ready to get put wow. in. You sure they're cooked enough? Yes, yeah, Chef, they will be. They'll be perfect for you guys. Why are you making uh, your Bernays off the heat? Uh, I'm actually off on, off on, so I don't scramble the eggs. What happens if you scramble this? I'm screwed. Good luck. Thank you, Chef. You have 10 minutes left. Eric's basting is flawless. It's amazing. Okay. He's cooking that steak like a professional chef. Steak goes in, and I'm just praying it's getting a good sear. I hear the sizzle, so that's a good sign. Like music to my ears. I look down at what should be my hot skillet, and the friggin' pan isn't searing hot. And like, that's rule number one for your steak. You want like a searing hot pan. So I'm kind of in the weeds at this point about my steak. So I'm thinking, put it in the oven. The oven's at 325 right now. If you give it five minutes in there, it should cook all the way through. Mike has his steak now in the oven. The steak's not thick enough to be in an oven. I would have it on top of the stove where you can see it, watch it carefully. I'm basting the steak with butter, and all I'm thinking is, do not freaking overbase the steak. Five minutes remaining. Get those fries in the basket, guys. Oh my god, I am so stupid. I put my fries in the 300 degree fryer, not the 375. They're not bubbling. If one thing could sink Kayla, it's going to be her fries. She is behind everybody, and if she doesn't really pull it together, I honestly think she's going home. Final two minutes, you should be plating. There's only three components on the plate. They all have to be perfect. Everything has to kind of come together in harmony in order to be a delicious experience. Otherwise, you're going to have cold frites, hot steak, Bernays sauce, which is thick and gloopy. You don't want that. Three, two, one, heads up! Time's up, and I'm like, yes, got it all down. It was really close to get those fries down, but I'm actually feeling pretty good about it. I have no idea how my steak is cooked on the inside. It could be raw, it could be overcooked. I'm not overly confident right now. I don't know if I've done enough to make it to the top four. I finished everything. My sauce tastes great, my fries are perfect, and I believe my steak's a perfect oh. medium rare. I can't go home, I really can't. It's time to taste your steak frites and find out who will be leaving the MasterChef Canada kitchen. Please bring your plates to the front. Kayla, we asked for a steak to be cooked perfect. Medium rare. What am I going to see when I cut your steak open? Um, nice and crisp on the outside and a beautiful medium rare on the inside. You're confident of that? Never too confident. It certainly is a little darker on the outside than I might expect. OK. That is a nicely cooked medium rare steak. Yes. See it quite nicely. It's a little dark in some areas, which would lead me to believe maybe the pan was a little too hot. Yes, Chef. But the cook is perfect medium rare. The difference of color from the searing from the outside edge to a richer, deeper pink as it moves to the center. Beautiful. Thank you, Chef. It's very, very good. The seasoning is spot on also. Thank you, Chef. I was very concerned that you were putting too much on. Kayla. Hi, Chef. You happy? Um, I'm very happy with my steak and my Bernays. These uh, french fries? Try one. What do you think? I think they're cooked. I think they need more color on the outside, though. I definitely agree with you that it needs a lot more sun, I think. Looking at my fries, all I'm thinking is, where is my purse? I need my bronzer right now. These fries are pasty. I would pay for that. <laughs> Thank you so much. It's delicious. Much. It's well balanced, great acidity. How did you master a Bernays in one hour? You made it before? Uh, third time's a charm. Uh, this is my, my third time, but I, um, I, I eat a lot of it, so I know what it's supposed to taste like. It took me hundreds of times to master the basic, humble hollandaise sauce, which is the mother of this sauce. And you've done that three times. Thank you, Chef. Had you nailed the fries, you'd probably have one of the best steak frites with Bernays that I've ever had. It's so close. 
Yes, Chef. Hi, Kayla. So what are you making? I'm making a stuffed veal loin. Stuffed with what? The Parmesan cheese, burrata, basil, some rendered down pancetta, and a little bit of chili flakes. Where's your veal one? Did you, it's, did you I stuff just it popped it in the oven. Yeah, it's, it's in stuffed. The oven? It's in, in the oven. I butter basted it. Very Frenchy, very fancy. You think Italian food, you think simple. All of a sudden, you're like butterflying a veal loin and filling it and stuffing it. it. Seems very ambitious. You know, I just really want to impress you. Somebody's going home. And there's only four of us. I mean, those odds aren't good. At the end of the day, that veal has to deliver. Absolutely, Chef. You can talk the talk. I hope you can walk the walk. Ten minutes remaining. So some very interesting things happening out there. At this point, I think Kayla, if she can pull off the stuffed veal, and if it's still pink and moist in the middle, that would be very impressive, but very, very, very ambitious. This dish could either shoot me up into top three, or it could send me home. Tell me about your dish. Stuffed veal loin with cheese, olive tapenade, crispy fried capers. Very tricky to get a stuffed veal loin. Perfect. How did you want to cook it? Medium rare, medium? Uh, medium. 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 Yeah. Let's see. Not bad. It's a medium. True medium. So you nailed the temperature. You were able to get a nice seasoned crust on the outside. The filling, I take it or leave it. The pinkness of the veal in the center is spot on, and it's moist and tender and really quite flavorful. You think you made any mistakes here? The fact there's no starch anywhere to be found. I think that it was a risk, and I think if you conceptualize a dish correctly, you don't always need starch. You nailed the cooking here. The color is perfect. It's rested, basted it properly. You think this dish is going to take you to the next level? I hope so, chef. Hmm. I don't want to be too confident, but I think I have impressed them. The person who made the best dish in this last mystery box challenge, who is about to become a top three finalist in MasterChef Canada is Congratulations. So very much. Thank Great you. Great dish. I absolutely love scallops. It's my favorite ingredient of all time. The key today is keeping the flavors very clean and delicate and letting this beautiful scallop shine. I've never cooked with live scallops before or broken them down. So this is a big risk, again. Just got to get my scallop open. For a home cook who's never opened up a sea scallop before, it could be a delicate and time-consuming process, as we can see. These scallops are taking forever. I need to hustle. Kayla, what are you making? Well, I'm making a seared scallop, crispy parsnip chips, duck confit potatoes, a sweet pea puree, and some pickled uh, cucumber. Sounds ambitious. I've got to be honest, I'm a little concerned about the fact that it's taken you 20 minutes to open those scallops. Do yes. you think that you should have made a different choice? No, Chef. I'm confident with my dish. Kayla has nine lives in this competition. That girl is like a cat. 15 minutes. You have 15 minutes remaining. Those are ready. Those are pickling. So Eric is super confident with what he's cooking. He says he'll be able to get the balance between curry and the sweetness of the crabs. It sounds great. I think Kayla right now is playing catch up. Her dish is incredibly ambitious. I mean, there's a ton of stuff going on. It sounds like too many elements in one plate, chewing up a ton of time. It could be the downfall. Oh. Fire, fire, fire. Oh, I just feel like everything's going wrong. My scallops took so long. I'm trying to act calm, but I'm not. And it's not good. Fire. I could be going home. I'm already behind. I need to hustle, because I'm not going to have anything on the plate. Under this much pressure, I just really need to stay focused. I want beautiful seafood dishes. Eric's tasting his sauce. Yeah, it's good now. Reed is plating. Kayla, I can't see any components of her dish. She's going to run out of time. Just got to get this pea puree perfect. I'm cooking for my life. My hands are just shaky. 30 seconds! 
Put those garnishes on, come on! Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, stop! Tell me about the dish. I did a seared sea scallop on a sweet pea puree with a confit potato and a pickled cucumber, a bit of microgreens on top, and then uh, for some crunch, I did the parsnip chips. Before I try your dish, I just want to let you know that I think it's incredible what you've achieved here, because you've been in so many pressure tests, and you continue to dig deep, find a way to get through. You're a fighter. Thank you, Chef. I hope your dish represents that. Me too. Try that. You think that's cooked on the inside properly? I think it's a little over, actually. A tad bit over. Yeah. Overall, though, I think the dish has balance. I like the acidity in it. I wish the scallops had maybe 10, 15 seconds less in the pan. It's a very admirable dish. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Chef. And this here is the confit potato. Yes, yeah, Chef. And you confit that in? Duck fat. Have you done that before? One chef. They're cooked. I was concerned that they wouldn't be cooked in the one hour time. And this is the pea puree, you say? Yes, chef. You can tell the mint. It's the last flavor that I get in my palate. Lots of elements on that dish. Adventurous. Thank you. My scallops were in the pan for literally 15 seconds too long. And this could send me home. Kayla, there are a lot of valuable lessons to have been learned in the MasterChef kitchen. And one of those was not to underestimate you. Thank you, Chef. You've worked hard for your success here. And when you encountered challenges that would have defeated someone else, you survived because you are smart. You listened, you tasted, and you took risks. Please come up and say goodbye. Thank you so much for everything. An amazing Thank home you. It has been a life-changing experience. We think yes. <gasps> I just really want to win this challenge. I've really learned that I can push harder than I ever thought I could push. I can't let my team down. This is for the troop. The runaway winner was Kayla. 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 Thank you, Sean. You're very inspiring. Kayla. Canada's first ever master chef. Who's that gonna be? This person's food and plates are as beautiful as they are. And Marita, you're gonna win it for your daughter. Congratulations, you two, okay? I will take away the most amazing skills for life and for cooking. It was a good ride. And I'm gonna miss it. A lot.